This is our town, St. Paul, Minnesota, USA. Located halfway between the equator and the North Pole, with no large bodies of water nearby to check extreme temperatures and no protective mountain ranges to ward off heat and cold, St. Paulites have learned to live with the distinct seasonal changes traditional in a temperate climate. Winters here are cold, with plenty of ice and snow. The clear, bright days and the thrill of winter sports more than compensate for any inconvenience brought about by blustery weather. Summers are marked by periods of bright, warm sun and cooling showers when we appreciate our abundance of summer recreational facilities. To combat these extremes in climate, we have at our disposal a wide choice of clothing. For thousands of years, Man has steadily improved upon his apparel, weaving, sewing, and inventing new fabrics to keep his body free from the effects of heat and cold. Through many centuries, he relied on animal skins and furs and cloth woven from living fibers. Nowadays, these age-old methods have been supplemented by man-made synthetics. It's important that St. Paulites be accurately informed about weather conditions. Newspapers, radio, television, and other communications make weather reporting a part of their daily schedule. Everyone, young and old alike, is interested in what the weather will be. It's a vital part of our lives. For weather forecasting tells us what to wear, how to dress, this afternoon, tonight, or tomorrow morning. Whether there'll be rain or snow is something mother must know every day of the year. So the children will be prepared. Cold St. Paul winters call for the warmest sweaters, coats, and gloves to keep young bodies healthy in and out of doors. Winter brings with it many hazards which must be guarded against by the best our clothing industry has to offer. Comfortable, lightweight garments designed to provide freedom of movement and utmost warmth. St. Paul's global position at 40 degrees north latitude creates our climate of extremes. During the winter, we're tilted away from the sun and receive only its reflected rays. These long slanted rays are not strong nor abundant enough to be absorbed and we find ourselves with many months of low temperatures and snow-covered streets. But adequate clothing permits us to enjoy ourselves even in the midst of winter's grip. In summer, we bear the direct rays of the sun which cause our warmest temperatures. But being a people fond of the outdoors, we found ways to escape the heat of summer. Present-day summer clothing is a far cry from the swimsuits of 1910. In those days, the body was intended to be covered. Social behavior cared little for comfort, and clothing was not designed with the wearer in mind. Activities of all kinds were restricted by cumbersome styles. Only during the last 40 years or so have people begun to enjoy the benefits of sensible, easy-to-wear clothing. Women especially had always been subjected to the discomforts of bustles, long skirts, heavy materials, and other constricting garments and accessories. These limited their freedom, prevented an active participation in the community, kept them in the home and away from healthy activities such as sports, which are today enjoyed by women of all ages. But women have always been style conscious. In Pioneer St. Paul, stores were stocked with the latest fabrics and patterns from eastern cities. And the lady of the house could put her ingenuity to work to fashion garments for herself and for her family that would do justice to folks in New York, Boston, or Philadelphia. When the demands of a conservative society were silenced, the bustle and long skirt were replaced by the flapper who told the world that she would participate in an active world, wearing clothes which allowed her to do as much as a man. Modern inventions have brought about the need for suitable clothes. Although the enclosed, comfortable cars of today don't require special garb, once upon a time, 20 miles an hour was a breathtaking speed, and high-sitting, open cars called for scarfs to keep wide-brimmed hats from blowing away and appropriate coats to keep the dust off starched collars and mutton sleeves. Today, choice of clothing is dictated by purpose, style, and personal taste, ensuring high fashion with maximum efficiency. 
Back in 1871, when our town was still a fledgling city, Gordon and Ferguson began clothing St. Paul folks with coats and robes made from the warm, weatherproof skins of wandering buffalo. Today in a modern plant, the firm has progressed from the manufacture of the rude garments of frontier Minnesota to smart, perfectly tailored outdoor clothing for men, women, and boys. It's an interesting operation, one which requires skilled hands and skilled equipment. Yards of material spread out on 75-foot tables in layers up to eight inches high first come under the sure hand of the cutter, who guides the whirling cutting machines along a pattern. All parts of a garment must come from the same piece of material and are shade marked by a ticketing machine to keep them in order. The pattern is placed on top of the stack, but each layer of cloth must be cut to exactly the same measurements for proper fit when the garment is completed. These workers are masters of their trades. And though their tools save time and labor, only their steady hands and eyes can assure a job well done. Each operation contributes to the overall perfection of fine tailoring. Operators sew only one portion of a garment, such as pockets, on machines which complete four to 5,000 stitches per minute. Some machines are equipped with special attachments which do binding and other fancy stitching. The stitching room is a well-organized area, with materials moving from one operator to the next, each one adding her own particular skill to create a piece of clothing more attractive and serviceable than any homemade garment could be. Quality control is maintained at all times by inspections and measurements, which make sure that garments are being finished to exact specifications, guarding the standards of fine workmanship. Though the buffalo coat has passed from our scene, leather coats are still made in substantial quantity. Buttonholes are fashioned on automatic machines which cut and stitch the holes to preset sizes. By the operator merely pressing a pedal, two or four hole buttons are applied to the garment by a machine which automatically stops after making 21 stitches. Some pressing is done between manufacturing steps and all finished goods receive a final pressing to assure proper shape. Careful hanging further preserves the appearance. A fully staffed stock room receives the finished merchandise and stores it until needed to fill an order. A carefully devised system of stock control simplifies the assembly of orders by personnel of the packing and shipping department. 300 employees of Gordon and Ferguson use their skill and experience to provide folks from coast to coast with the quality of field and stream and town and country outdoor clothing. Local educational facilities provide many skilled workers for the St. Paul clothing industry. Our town is prominent in this field, and thousands of folks find profitable employment in all sorts of garment manufacturing. Such public vocational schools offer comprehensive training to young people in preparation for work of this type. Students learn sewing machine operation, cutting, layout, and pattern work under the instruction of skilled tradesmen with the wholehearted cooperation of local clothing firms. Clothing courses are also popular with adults in special evening instruction programs. These attentive folks are using their leisure hours to pick up pointers on home tailoring learning how to design and make clothes for their families. In either case, the classes are informative and constructive. Pupils practice under the guidance of trained teachers, following lectures and practical demonstrations. Courses range from beginner classes to advanced study. Selection of fabric 
pattern work and layout are followed by instruction in machine operation. Accessories have become an important part of modern wardrobes and their selection and proper use is demonstrated by experts. Besides information gained in the classes, pupils derive enjoyment from discovering hidden abilities and meeting new people. As with youngsters, school offers older folks the opportunity to expand both educational and social boundaries. The year's work culminates in a gala fashion show and party at which garments made by adult education pupils are modeled. Everyone is anxious to see the results of their classmates' work and especially to hear approval of their own creations. This is a critical audience, made up of students who learned well under expert guidance. All sorts of clothing is modeled, from sophisticated suits and dresses to carefully made children's attire. Pride and quality of workmanship, so lovingly imparted to each garment, has its reward in the spectator's enthusiastic applause. Home sewing today is a large-scale business. Woolen companies with wide and varied stocks of fine fabric supply yard goods to both home and professional tailors. St. Paul, the center of the nation's winter sports clothing industry, is the site of many garment and knitting mills. The University of Minnesota Agricultural College in St. Paul is one of the many public and private institutions conducting research in textiles and in the care and maintenance of clothing. Thorough studies are made of the qualities of different kinds of fabric. One interesting experiment shows the resistance of various materials to fading. A special machine is used to gauge the degree of fading from exposure to light. Another test is concerned with washability and color fastness. New synthetics are studied as well as standard fabrics and findings are often published and distributed as a public service. The amount of strain which fabrics will take is also measured to determine their durability. Strength is especially important in children's clothes and in work garments for they undergo hard use. Results of these strength experiments often furnish the basis for recommending to manufacturers as well as homemakers the fabrics that will give satisfactory performance in use. The work in these laboratories is carried on under exacting conditions. Humidity and temperature are carefully watched to assure complete control and a standard research environment. Using the most modern equipment devised, scientists and trained technicians put all their knowledge and skill to work to assure folks in St. Paul and throughout the United States of better, more practical apparel. A sizable portion of our family budget is spent on clothing. Mom, Dad, and the youngsters all have separate wardrobes for nearly every season, and these clothes must be well taken care of. Modern laundries and dry cleaning firms are important to the proper clothing care. Their advanced equipment and methods offer excellent protection to the life and appearance of every kind of garment. A complex identification system enables workers to sort finished garments for return to the proper owner. Materials which cannot be washed are processed by automatic machines which clean with chemical solutions. Stains are removed by the spotter, an expert with chemicals, who must also recognize the type of stain. The presser uses steam equipment to give each garment a perfect finish. Additional touching up is done with a hand iron. Every piece is given a thorough inspection to see that spots have been removed, that minor repairs have been made, and that a proper pressing job has been done. Unsatisfactory garments are sent back for reprocessing. Finally, protective bags or wrappings are applied for safe delivery. When ready to wear, our clothes present a sparkling new appearance, testimony to the skill and efficiency of modern dry cleaning and laundering methods. Proper care and pride of clothing are important parts of a child's education. In St. Paul homes and schools, these points are stressed to encourage an interest in good appearance. 
Good grooming and personal care always mark the well-dressed man or woman. Privately owned schools show girls and women the way to an attractive appearance. Courses include makeup instruction by professional beauty experts. Every phase of personal care is covered in comprehensive courses. Many women attend to learn more about themselves, how to dress to best advantage, what hairstyle is correct for their particular face, the proper makeup and its application, many subjects which help create a better appearance. Professional modeling courses are also conducted for girls seeking a career in the fashion world. Whether for personal satisfaction or professional purposes, such schools teach good grooming habits to thousands of women each year. Knowledge of personal care offered by experts leads to an attractive appearance and personality. Pioneer and leader in the scientific research of human hair is Rayette Incorporated at St. Paul. In fully equipped laboratories, a large staff of chemists and physicists devote themselves to every phase of this research, developing and perfecting products used in beauty salons all over the country for the care of human hair. Modern science has told us that hair differs structurally from person to person, so every known type of hair is literally taken apart and put together in these laboratories. The product development lab applies the results of research to actual products. Scientists test the quality and action of every ingredient used. They discover if certain ingredients will blend with other materials, if they'll do exactly what is required of them, and various products are tested for their resistance to harmful bacteria. To guard against skin irritation, tests are made on animals, and if the results are satisfactory, a further test is made by patch testing human beings. The first patch testing is done on the scientists who have prepared the formulas, men and women who are confident that when a product has reached this point, its safety is well assured. But testing doesn't stop here. The patch test wagon goes next to the production floor where conscientious employees display pride and pleasure in their work by a willing response to these vital tests by their personal interest in the products they manufacture. Finally, a formula is selected, but it is not yet ready for manufacture. Findings must undergo practical tests in the experimental beauty salon. Permanent wave lotions and hair colorings are applied by professional beauticians, and exact comparisons are made with standard products. Only when a formula meets all the rigid standards which have been set up by the company is it approved for production. Raw materials for production come from every part of the world. Lanolin from sheep's wool, expensive perfumes, oil from the tropics, and rare chemicals. This procurement is handled as carefully as a research program. Specification of raw materials must meet high standards. When the raw materials reach the warehouse, quality control tests each one, and sample production runs are performed. Once satisfied that all ingredients are of the correct type, the modern machines of the production line take over, turning quality raw materials into quality beauty salon products. In these days of peak production and ever-rising demand, finished products are rushed to the expanded shipping docks, where six to eight semi-trailers line up at once for loading. Filled with permanent waves, rinses, shampoos, dandruff lotions, hair colorings, and creams, their cargoes are the result of untiring research. Loaded in St. Paul, they start on their mission of beauty. Daily, they travel the highways, carrying the tested products of Rayette Incorporated to every part of the nation. St. Paulites are as fashion conscious as folks in any of the big style centers of the United States or Europe. We're a cosmopolitan city in the midst of the great upper Midwest, a place where well-dressed 
is a term taken for granted, where men and women consider their appearance of utmost importance. Retail shops in our town offer every member of the family clothing that represents the very finest tailoring and styling of the garment manufacturer. Stocks are always plentiful, with a wide choice of apparel for every purpose. Store owners and buyers maintain contact with their customers. Their experience keeps pace with and even anticipates our desires and requirements. When we enter a St. Paul clothing store to find a particular item, we're seldom disappointed because merchants do all they can to display the newest line for every occasion. Showing sponsored by both public and private organizations keeps St. Paul women posted on new styles and materials from the fashion capitals of the world. When these new clothes are released to the public, the women of our town will be among the first to wear them through the conscientious services of alert, well-informed St. Paul retailers. In a town that boasts many tales of the romance of industry, the story of Albrecht Furs and its association with Borgana, the miracle man-made fabric that looks more like fur than fur itself, is one that's caught and held the imagination of folks of all ages in all walks of life. Backed by a century of expert fur making, the company is well equipped to offer the women of America the superior craftsmanship the beauty and durability of Borgana. When Ernst Albrecht came to Frontier St. Paul in 1855, bringing with him the heritage of his family's Coburg, Germany fur business, his dreams of a wonderful new world could hardly have matched the St. Paul of today, nor this modern store, so well known to discerning, fashion-conscious women. Through the years, the fur trade grew. An abundance of skins brought into St. Paul by Indian and white trappers gave skilled furriers ample raw materials to cut and stitch warm, long-lasting coats. Coats to keep out the cold of those long pioneer winters. Fur wasn't a luxury in those days. It was a necessity for survival. Fur coats were a common sight in an era that saw mink pelts sold for a dollar apiece. Just before the turn of the century, America's booming fur trade helped the company become the largest manufacturing furrier in the West. Otto Albrecht, the founder's son, entered the business in the 1890s and after assuming the presidency, originated the August Fur Sale, now an annual institution in towns both large and small throughout the United States. A nationwide mail order clientele was also developed and as fur requirements changed and styles began to take on a new look every year, a skill and mastery of fur manufacture evolved and was handed down from generation to generation until today the showroom displays the finest of the furrier's craft. But in 1954, a revolution took place in the fur business. Modern science and technology entered the picture with something totally new. The miracle of Borgana captured the imagination of women from coast to coast when the George Borg Corporation introduced its fur-like softness and strength, its amazingly lightweight, its striking beauty, all made possible by the combination of versatile man-made fibers. For years, furriers had searched for an acceptable imitation fur. Many attempts proved unsuccessful until George W. Borg, famed industrialist, came up with Borgana. The interest of President Robert Albrecht was aroused, and with the help of his chief designer, Viola Fenlon, he became the first furrier to make Borgana coats. An instant success, production was begun for nationwide selling. From the initial stages of manufacture, Albrecht treats Borgana with the same care as real fur. Folks who work in the plant are actually trained furriers, who worked with furs of all kinds from mouton to mink. After cutting coat parts to pattern, the pieces are carefully placed in stacks. All cutting is done by hand, like fine furs. 
each piece individually rather than several layers at a time, like cloth coats. Each piece is meticulously color matched, the same as fur, to assure an even, consistent color throughout the coat. Every operation is performed under strict supervision to maintain high standards. Cutting finished and pieces assembled, they're ready for the sewing department. Machines designed for stitching fur coats are used exclusively in the sewing department. Here too, the skill gained from long experience in the fur business determines the fine quality found in these Borgana coats. Pieces are accurately guided through swift, highly specialized machines. With one step finished, the coat is passed on to the next operation. Machine operators are all specialists, each trained in one sewing procedure so that each part of the coat receives the very best workmanship possible. Hands are indispensable in the manufacture of a Borgana coat, cape, or stole. Style is an important factor when women shop for a new winter coat. And since Albrecht-made Borgana offers all the qualities of workmanship found in the most expensive fur coats, it's only natural that its style should be just as luxurious. The work of the cutters and machine operators follows the specifications of designers, producing a coat that reflects the latest in fashion trends. A wide range of styles and colors are available to fill the growing demand and to satisfy every taste and requirement. As the final operations are performed, the results of many skilled jobs are brought together in a striking combination of an age-old craft and the ingenuity and imagination of modern science. Finished coats are given a thorough inspection, assuring quality of workmanship, materials, and correct fit. Only garments conforming to the very highest standards are permitted to leave the shops. Capes, stoles, coats undergo the same meticulous scrutiny before being shipped to dealers from New York to California, from the Canadian border to the Gulf of Mexico. The story of Borgana is the story of American industry's efforts to provide people everywhere with better products for better living. Through the determination of scientific research, to develop a fabric with all the qualities of fine sheared fur, but with only a fraction of its weight and cost, and through the craftsmanship of Albrecht Furs of St. Paul, leading manufacturers of Borgana coats, a clothing dream has become a reality. Through the efforts of many people, we enjoy the best in clothing, for this is our town, St. Paul, Minnesota, USA.